interesting things about astronomy and cosmology because they, they, they challenge you that, that nobody that I know It's interesting, this idea of the Big Bang created the universe. That's what Einstein's theory says. That's textbook cosmology, if you like. In a groundbreaking revelation, physicist Brian Cox challenges the conventional understanding of the universe's origin. Cox contends that the cosmos predates the widely accepted Big Bang theory. This provocative assertion has sparked intense debates among scientists and cosmologists, reshaping our perception of the universe's birth. So, join us on this intellectual journey as we explore Cox's paradigm-shifting ideas. Before we delve in, remember to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. The journey promises to be a mind-bending experience. Modern science explains the beginning of the universe through the Big Bang Theory. This theory suggests the cosmos started with a powerful release of energy from a point in space-time called Singularity, where energy and mass approached infinity, and all dimensions converged to zero. However, Brian Cox has challenged this idea, suggesting that the universe has always existed, making the Big Bang Theory incorrect. The Big Bang Theory proposes the existence of singularity, a point without time, space, or matter. This raises questions about what came before it and the processes that initiated the Big Bang, questioning whether the universe has always existed or had a definite start. Scientists, especially physicists and biologists studying the essence of life, are on a quest to understand the very beginning. Currently, we estimate the universe to be around 13.7 billion years old, but the reasons behind its origin remain a mystery. Questions about events preceding the Big Bang persist, prompting ongoing research in this area. What we know for sure is that the universe was extremely hot, dense, and tiny 13.7 billion years ago. Interestingly, everything we see in the universe today was once compressed into a space possibly smaller than an atom. The universe has since expanded and cooled, giving rise to complex structures, including DNA, celestial bodies, and life. Efforts to unravel these mysteries involve studying the stars and creating instruments that can replicate conditions near the Big Bang. Centuries ago, St. Augustine pondered the nature of God's existence before the universe's creation suggesting that time was a creation of God and there was no before. In the 20th century, Einstein's theory of relatively connected mass and time, revealing that time flows differently near massive objects, intertwining the concepts of time and causality. Einstein's viewpoint suggests that discussing events before the Big Bang is pointless, challenging the idea that every effect has a cause. Despite ongoing debates, the scientific community strongly believes in the Big Bang theory, According to this theory, the universe isn't expanding into something. Instead, space-time itself is expanding. Space and time are thought to have originated with the Big Bang and have been stretching since. Einstein's theory of general relativity, supported by real-world evidence like Hubble's observation of the universe's expansion in 1929 and Penzias and Wilson's discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation in 1965, forms the foundation of these concepts. The Big Bang Theory suggests that within the first second of its existence, the universe went through six stages, influencing its structure and fundamental forces. These stages include the Planck, Grand Unification, Inflationary, Electroweak, Quark, and Present Day Phases. The Hadron Phase, occurring one second after the Big Bang, is a crucial moment when the universe shrank to the size of an atom. At this scale, quantum theory governs classical physics. Cosmologists like Stephen Hawking explored whether quantum theory explaining subatomic phenomena could apply to the entire universe. This led to the development of inflationary quantum cosmology, considered a major scientific advancement. It challenges the idea that the cosmic singularity was a point with zero volume. However, quantum theory introduces uncertainty, making it impossible to pinpoint the universe's exact beginning or initial volume. Quantum theory allows for particles to spontaneously emerge from a vacuum, leading to speculation about the universe arising from a random fluctuation. This challenges the classical views of a vacuum as a state without particles, but not without properties. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle dictates that certain properties cannot be precisely measured simultaneously, such as position and momentum, and time and energy. This brings us to the idea that a perfect vacuum contradicts the uncertainty principle, suggesting emptiness is inherently unstable. 
According to Brian, it's astonishing to think a universe with billions of galaxies could emerge from what we perceive as nothingness. The concept becomes more intriguing when considering the balance of positive and negative energy in a closed universe, resulting in a total energy of precisely zero. Stephen Hawking explored how the universe might originate from nothing, considering gravity's negative energy and its role in the creation of matter. As stars collapse into black holes, the negative gravitational energy surpasses the positive energy in matter. Yet, the entire universe can spontaneously emerge, according to quantum mechanics. A vacuum filled with energy can expand rapidly, culminating in the Big Bang. The universe, therefore, originated from nothing, with no energy, space, or time before the event. This raises questions about the randomness of the quantum fluctuation and its implications for the possibility of another energetic vacuum triggering a new Big Bang. In physics, fundamental constants like the speed of light underpin all physical laws. Precise tuning of these constants is crucial for the viability of the universe. Any deviation, even slight, could disrupt the stability of atoms and stars. The exact tuning of these constants remains a perplexing mystery. Why is our universe three-dimensional when Minkowski's space in the special theory of relativity has four dimensions? Imagine living on a two-dimensional sheet, where forces like light and strong nuclear forces operate only within that sheet. What if there's another universe, another sheet, just a tiny distance away? We wouldn't notice it because our forces are confined to our sheet. This concept challenges our understanding of the cosmos, and experiments are being considered to detect its presence. Some signs of these extra dimensions have been suggested, notably within the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, though in a speculative context. Considering the possibility of a neighboring alternate universe just a millimeter away, existing in all directions but invisible due to governing forces, is intriguing. Fest's revelation suggests that in four or more dimensions, the stability of planetary orbits becomes unstable, making our universe implausible. This leads to the anthropic principle, suggesting that observers influence the universe's structure and laws. The weak anthropic principle states our universe supports life, while the strong anthropic principle suggests the universe inherently allows for intelligent life. The participatory anthropic principle proposes that phenomena only exist upon observation, implying observers play a crucial role in giving meaning to our universe. Alternative theories include cosmological natural selection, suggesting each black hole births a new universe on its other side. In these universes, fundamental constants may differ, impacting the emergence of intelligent life. Brian, in a BBC series, discussed the universe's origin, introducing a dimension of time before the Big Bang. This idea aligns with cosmic inflation, where the universe rapidly expanded after the initial Big Bang. The cause of this early expansion is a question, possibly due to interactions among poorly understood forces. Brian's ideas are supported by Sir Roger Penrose's research on eons, representing cosmic epics in a cyclical pattern. Each eon begins with a Big Bang, followed by expansion, contraction, and ending in a big crunch. Remnants of past cosmic epics may persist as hawking points, detectable through advanced observational techniques. While awaiting empirical confirmation, the concept of Hawking's points underscores the evolving nature of our understanding of the universe's origins. Both Brian's and Penrose's theories face challenges and controversies, criticized for being speculative without direct observational evidence. Critics also question the feasibility of Penrose's cyclic eon theory in light of established laws of thermodynamics and other fundamental physics principles. Now, let's talk about a big idea in space science, the multiverse hypothesis. This idea suggests that there are lots of universes, each with its own set of rules and features. The thought is that our universe might be just one of many in a huge and varied multiverse. People like this idea because it helps explain why our universe seems just right for life. Scientists notice that the basic rules and laws in our universe seem to be just perfect to allow life like ours. Some suggest the idea that our universe has specific qualities to fit intelligent beings like us, called the anthropic principle. But thinking about a universe so well suited for life makes us wonder if it's just luck or if there's a deeper reason. The multiverse idea says that there are tons of universes, each with different features. In this big group of universes, some naturally turn out well suited for life, and we happen to be in one of them because life like ours wouldn't work in any other kind of universe. 
One version of this idea is the inflationary multiverse. It says that right after the Big Bang, the universe expanded fast, and different parts of space could have expanded at different rates, creating separate bubble universes. Each of these bubbles would have its own unique rules. Even though the multiverse idea is interesting and helps with the fine-tuning question, it has challenges. One big challenge is that there's no direct proof of these other universes beyond our own. Since these universes aren't connected to ours in a way we can test, it's super hard to check or see them. Critics of the multiverse idea say it lacks proof and falls into the realm of untestable guesses, making it more of a philosophical idea than a scientific theory. They say it's limited because it doesn't make predictions we can check through tests or observations. Despite these challenges, some scientists like the multiverse idea because it can help explain big questions in space science. For example, it might explain eternal inflation, where new universes keep popping up through inflation, possibly explaining how vast our cosmos is. The multiverse idea also connects with quantum mechanics, where particles can be in many states at once until we look at them. This makes people wonder if all possible outcomes happen in parallel universes. It also ties in with string theory, which suggests that there are more than the usual four dimensions of space-time. Some versions of string theory suggest a bunch of possible universes, each with its own rules. While the multiverse is still debated and studied, it's a crucial idea in space science. So spacers, what do we think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Leave us a thumbs up if you liked this video and please share. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on to stay updated on new and awesome space content. Thank you for spacing out with us and I'll see you next video.